So hello everyone, you're uh, very welcome to our webinar this evening, where we'll aim to help farmers to understand and capitalise on their pasture-based reports so that they can achieve grazing excellence in 2021. So my name is Joseph Dunphy. I'm joined tonight by my grass tank colleague, John Douglas. I'm also joined by Michal O'Leary, the coordinator of Pasture Base Ireland. And last, but certainly not least, we're joined tonight with, by dairy farmer Jim White from Carrigan Shore in County Tipperary, who we're very thankful who, uh, for offering up both his time and his pasture-based data for tonight's event. So without further ado, I will get started and I'll hand you over to Micheál O'Leary from Pasture Base Ireland, who will give us a, a bit of an update on pasture-based usage for 2020. Thanks, Joseph. And again, just to reiterate, I suppose you're all very we welcome to tonight's webinar. Um, and hopefully that you will get some, um, I suppose, some information from, I suppose, this webinar and some, I suppose, quick gains, I suppose, that you can implement on your own farms tonight. Um, so just to get started, I suppose, just to, to show just a range of tools that are on pasture base. Um, and I suppose this menu of tools is, is, is ever growing. Um, you can see on the top left hand corner, you have the grass wedge, the, the most commonly used tool in pasture base. Um, throughout 2020, I suppose there has been over or ha has been around 70,000 uh, grass wedges. Um, so we, we are gathering a, a lot of information at the moment, um, uh, year on year, and we'll be going through that uh, at later tonight. Um, then on the bottom left hand corner, uh, grass budget. Again, this tool is becoming, I suppose, increasingly uh, more popular with farmers trying to predict grassland performance and trying to get an idea of what's going to be happening on their farm in, in a month's time or maybe two months' time, especially in the spring and autumn. Um, the bottom right-hand corner then is a feed budget. Um, I suppose it calculates how much feed is available on the farm um, and, and as well for the winter requirement. So again, that's when, when, the, when animals are housed. And then the top right-hand corner, um, your spring and autumn rotation planners. Um, so again, they're, they're just four simple tools. Um, and if we just move on, I suppose, and look at the usage and the number of farms on pasture base. Um, so on 20, in 2020, the blue column there, um, there has, there's over 3,500 farmers using the application, um, which is slightly back from 2019, um, if we look at the left-hand side there. Um, and I suppose we can see that there has been a steady increase in, in I suppose, the, the usage intensity of pasture base. So I suppose we have three, three and a half thousand farmers on the system and they're using the, the, they're, they're recording more covers. So I suppose from, from calculating it, um, we can see that on average, um, our, our three and a half thousand farmers are recording roughly about 19 covers. Um, and this is, I suppose, has been an increase a large increase, I suppose, since the last couple of years um, in 2018, 19 and 17, um, when I suppose there was 13, roughly 13 and a half covers um, per farm. So I suppose it's great to see that, that the tool is being used um, and, and is being used a lot more. Um, if we, then if we just move on to see the, the usage or the number of covers coming in each, each week, um, it's very like the grass growth curve. Um, when, when grass growth is high, there's more guys measuring and there's more covers coming into pasture base. Um, and I suppose we, we peaked there roughly at about 22 covers coming in. Um, and we can see that, that there has been a big increase um, when we compare it to 2019. And if we look at the number of covers coming in um, from our offline app, roughly about 50% of the covers um, are coming in. Um, then if we move to the next slide, um, I suppose a lot of you would have seen this before. Um, it, it would be out, out on social media um, and in different publications, uh, the National uh, Grass Growth Curve for diff the different years. Um, we can see, I suppose, 2020 uh, started off being pretty typical um, as regards growth rates. Um, I suppose we, we were, um, can't forget, I suppose February was exceptionally wet and a, a lot of March as well. Um, but then I suppose the, the, we, we suffered a bit of a drought when we came in to June, uh, especially in the east and, and northeast. I suppose we were farms were, were, were definitely affected there in the middle of the summer. Um, and then I suppose, again, coming to the autumn time, um, pretty, pretty typical. Um, and we, we had good growth rates there, there in August. So then if we just move on and, and look at the amount of grass grown in farms um, in 2020, um, for dairy farmers who have recorded 30 or more measurements, 
um, on average, um, those farms would have grown 13.4 tonne. Um, and this was achieved in by about 7.4 grazings and 0.6 cuts of silage. So uh, eight events per paddock. Um, and I suppose the pre-grazing yield there, which would be a good indicator of grass quality out in farms, um, comes in at 15, for, um, 15.54. Um, so again, um, farmers are hitting the paddocks at the right cover. Um, we're looking for the pre-grazing yield to be between, uh, I suppose, 1,400 and 1,500. Um, so again, grass quality is good. If we look at the, the number of, you know, if we look down through the different years, I suppose, on average, um, farmers are typically growing about 13 and a half ton. Um, so that's the dairy farm, uh, the dairy farms on pasture base. Then if you look at the beef farms, again, um, rough, again, this is, this is 20 covers or more recorded, uh, the 2020 figures then, uh, roughly about 10 tons uh, was grown across the, the, the beef farms. Um, you can see the division there between grazing and silage. Um, surpluses which were made, I suppose, on the farm throughout the year. Um, 5.2 grazings and 0.7 um, cuts of silage. So I suppose uh, there are just less than six events per paddock. And I suppose the Grass 10 campaign, I suppose we're trying to increase the number of events per paddock up to 10. If we look at the pre-grazing yield, it looks a little high at 16, at 16.40. Um, so again, that might be just something for yourselves to look at on your own farms and to calculate, calculate that figure. Then if we look at sheep farms, a lot of this data would be coming from uh, the Tigers uh, Better Sheep Farms. Um, again, they're in about 11, just slightly over 11 tonnes, um, with um, 0.7, or sorry, by 5.7 grazings and um, 0.5 cuts of silage. Again, pre-grazing yield is, is a little high here, especially, especially for sheep, um, which would be generally uh, grazing covers at about uh, 12, 1300. Um, so again, maybe that might be something for you if you are a sheep farmer using pasture base. Um, calculate your, your pre-grazing yield, um, which is by dividing uh, 9,405 kilos divided by your, your 5.7 grazings. Then if we just move on, just I suppose an interesting enough graph, if we just break it down with the different counties. Um, again, for farmers, this is all farmers who would, who would have recorded 20 covers or more. Um, we can see that there is a, a good bit of variation across um, the different counties. Um, the guys on the right there are probably averaging about 12.7, 12 12.8, 12 uh, compared to, the, the, I suppose, the, the counties on the left, which are roughly just over 11. Um, so I suppose if you were, um, again, the, the number of farmers measuring in, in the different, uh, I suppose, counties are, is, is, is it's variable. Uh, if we take Clare, for example, there's about 24 farmers data um, involved in that Clare figure. And then if we move to Kilkenny on the right hand side, uh, 93 farms. So I suppose this graph ha has nothing, nothing to do with hurling or, or anything like that, I suppose. But um, definitely, I suppose there is a good bit of variation out there, I suppose, is the message. Um, then if we move on to the next one, um, it just shows, I suppose, the fertilizer, which is recorded on pasture base again. Um, you can record all your fertilizer and slurry application uh, throughout the year. Um, and we, I suppose over the years, we've seen this growing as well. Um, so uh, 2019, I suppose roughly 425 farmers were recording their, their fertilizer. And, and I suppose we saw a 70% increase um, with, with, with around 700 farmers um, recording fertilizer. So I suppose that's, it, it's great to see that. I suppose farmers are becoming more aware of um, becoming more aware of, I suppose, um, I suppose where their fertilizer is going and, and I suppose where the fertilizer is needed and the different times of the year that it is needed. And I suppose, again, our offline app um, is a possibly a, a big driver, I suppose, of, of more guys recording uh, the fertilizer application. Um, so I suppose a lot of farmers would know, I suppose, how much their annual fertilizer bill uh, comes to at the end of the year. Um, but I suppose when you talk about how much NPK and even sulfur was applied per paddock, um, definitely pasture base, I suppose, is the way to go. Uh, then, I suppose, to move on quickly again, um, I suppose a new dimension of, of pasture base, I suppose, is the, the milk data coming from the 13 co-ops, which are shown on screen there. And again, we'd like to thank all the different co-ops for, I suppose, participating and for uh, agreeing to, to, to send us the, the milk data. 
Um, and I suppose it, it, it's, it's very important, I suppose, for discussion groups and for benchmarking uh, for farmers uh, to see what's going on locally and to see who, who are the high achievers and what are they doing to get there. And, and usually, I suppose, grass is a big part to play in that as well. So I suppose we have the input, which is, which is grass, and I suppose to see the output as well, the, what, what you sold out the gate in, in milk. Um, so I suppose for the future for pasture base um, uh, and, and I suppose for the farmer, um, there has been a lot of changes over the last couple of years. And I suppose we have a lot of work in the pipeline as well at the moment. Um, I suppose when we, when, we have a, uh, when we have seen a big increase in the, the amount of people recording fertilizer, I think we need to focus on this area and try to improve it. Um, we have done a bit of work on soil fertility. We're hoping to, to bring in a mapping function as well in 2021. Um, and I suppose on the right hand side there, we're hoping to, I suppose, generate reports automatically, similar to ICBF. Um, and I suppose the grass growth predictor there that LED rule is working on um, and which is piloted on 55 farms in, the, in 2020. And we'd hope to bring that tool into pasture base for, for, for all farmers to use. Um, and I suppose we also want to touch on a small bit on, I suppose, the feed that's coming into the farm, whether that's coming uh, in the farmer silage from an outblock, or maybe it's bought in feed coming from your local merchant. Um, and I suppose then, I suppose the new, I suppose the new, a new perimeter for us, I suppose, is the nitrogen use efficiency on farm. And again, that would be something that we we would be looking towards uh, calculating um, in the not too not too distant future. Um, so I suppose there's a, there is a good bit going on. Um, with regard pasture base and I suppose you as the users of pasture base, if you have any um, suggestions or if you would like any changes to be done that would that would make life easier, um, be sure, to, I suppose, to let us know. Um, and I suppose the, the slide in front of us here at the moment uh, just gives us, uh, I suppose, a visual of the different reports which are available on the system. Um, and I suppose uh, the, the guys will be going through this in more detail um, with Jim. Um, and I suppose finally, um, I suppose I covered a good bit there in, in the first um, in the first 10 minutes. And um, if you have any questions, be it in relation to pasture base, um, if, if you want to use the Q&A um, option there at, at the bottom of your screen, and um, we more, more than happy would like to um, answer them. Um, we also have an excellent uh, farm um, helpline or a, a, help, a help center. Um, so th there is, if you log into www. Uh, pbi.e you'll get a link to the website uh, lots of information there um, and to be fair to the girls in the help center there isn't too much they don't know about the application and are always willing to give a hand um, so I suppose there's a lot there's a lot of information being gathered in pasture base and I suppose uh, we want you the farmer to uh, get most from it and I think we will we'll be running through some of the reports. And again, if you have any questions, don't be don't be afraid to to pop it into the box. And I think um, Joe, I'll leave it over to you for for, for now. Thanks. Thanks a million, there, Michal. John, I'll pass it over to you now. In terms of, we might take a quick look at yeah some of Jim's data. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get straight into it here with, with Jim. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Jim. Uh, how was the, the weather today down in Tipperary? Oh, it, was, it was good for the morning time, but it got a bit wet there in the afternoon and it's cold and that. But um, I still think we're we're tipping along nicely. No one to complain with it so far, you know, for yeah. the closed period, as we call it. It's, it's yeah. OK. Not so bad, not so bad. So just to give a bit of a background to yourself, Jim, um, I suppose, where, where where are you farming? What are you farming? Um, how many cows are you milking, stocking rate, things like that? Yeah, we're we're farming in um, southeast Tipperary, we call it, so in, in the Mullinahone. Mullinahone is my parish. Uh, we're just underneath Leave Um The the farm is low-lying. Um, it's, it's sheltered. I would consider it cosy it would be a word I'd use. Um, it's not exposed. So it, um, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a third of the farm would be drained, um, but it's drained well. And once I can keep the water away, keep, keep dikes right. It's, it, it, you know, I can, it, it, it would be on the dry side in my parish. I describe yeah. it. And um, we've built it up over the years um, with 200 cows now to calf down this year. And that, 
came over the last 20 years from 50 cows up nice and steady along. And I suppose the infrastructure is on the farm from when we had 50 cows and it was uh, roadways. So we have a lot of roadways and it grew up with the smaller numbers. If you understand me, I have a good road structure now and yeah. uh, access structure. Well, a lot of the, the older farm. roads are, are acting as spur roads and things like it's, that now. Yes, John. Yeah. And we like we developed it over the years with the water tanks in the middle of the fields and plenty of access, as I said, in and out and set up for reels then at all times uh, with the with the water tanks. Uh, so structurally, we're set up, ve- I'd say, very well. And we've been receding for, you know, so practically the whole farm has receded that we're yeah. grazing. Yeah. And, uh, so it's, and you're stocked at around is it 2.8, Jim? Two, around, yeah, we keep stock and raise yeah. is... You know, we, we got more land as we grew over the years, but we, we never really went over the old adage of a cow and acre, really, you know. So we're, we have, in, on a total farm basis, we have an, an out block with 67 hectares of a milking platform and with 28 hectares of an out farm that's farmed, you know, to a high, you know, as high a standard as this one. And um, so it's, we, we have, we have a, a stocking rate appropriate to what we can, we can grow and manage and have all, as much as we can grown on our own farm. And who's involved with you at home, Jim? Is it just yourself or is there anyone else involved with you? Yeah, my, myself and my wife, Teresa, and we're four daughters and they all help at some time. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's really, there's no labour hired as such. There are students come in at different times of the year, very good students. And um, I, I, I'm, I have contractors coming in doing all contract work and fencing work, manure spreading, all that's done. I organise somebody else to do all that and I concentrate on the, the big pair that's um, measuring grass and growing as much of it as possible and keep the cows milked and keep it organised. So Good stuff. It's, um, yeah, it's working, it's working well now. And just to give an overview of your cows in terms of what, what meal did you feed and what many kilos of mixed solids are they doing there this year? This year, I um, it's tracked for me all during the year, um, John, on the pasture base. So we fed, we fed um, eight hundred kilos of meal for the year, um, but it's it's been like we, we calve early, so we're calving the last week of January. So we, we feed meal in the springtime, and uh, we keep silage to a minimum, and then once we have the growth, we can cut down to the bare minimum on the meal. And uh, this year now we had a good bit in August there. We didn't have to go in with silage, but we went in with meal. So I'm not afraid to put in meal when I have to put it in. It's silage is the thing I like to keep away out of the equation. Um, I budget for 500 kilos, but the true figure for this year was 800 kilos. And look, the, the, the performance, which I don't get hooked up on, um, it's, it's shown here on pasture basis, 500 kilos of milk solids. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the performance, and we had a good good in calf rate, and yeah, we're it was a good year now for 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 grass and for for, for milking. Yeah, very good. No, that's that's a good uh, good introduction to yourself there. Um, so just moving on from that, then Jim, how did you get into I suppose the grass measuring side of things? Like, is, well, look, um, I, uh, I was you're, you're not you're, new, you're not new to the game for anyone listening or knowing. No, no, not the first time. That's the first thing to say. I'm not new to it at all. So I've been farming practically on my own as my own boss will say, whatever way you want to look at it for 20, 25 years. And if I go back on it, maybe uh, 05, 06, I think I was down at a real good open day down in Dennis Cochran's in Kilsheelan. And um, there was a new program starting up at that time. And Abigail Ryan in Chagas was looking after it. And I was really struck by the people that were there at Dennis's today and what he had done on his farm. I knew he was really top of his game and I could see that there was money, you know, the, the money was following on what he was doing. And um, I knew I had an opportunity to take on more land around the milking platform. So I got, luckily enough, got in on that Chagas uh, program for three years and um, we, we really got recorded them. But even before that, I was getting cows out earlier and I was, I was, so I've 20 years, you know, really following the grass thing and then got into it more then and developed along over the years in discussion groups yeah. and um, got involved in grass 10 then two years ago. And uh, I have to say that pushed me on that other little bit. It 
Copy we'll, 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 we'll touch on some of that later on. Yeah. So just to look at your figures there, I had just I had them up there, I suppose, just for everyone to have a look at while we were chatting there. But obviously, you know, very excellent performance though, your 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 annual tonnage there over the last well, it's four years without the drought year with fourteen point seven ton and with the drought year is thirteen point nine. So that's just the figure in brackets is, is including twenty eighteen there for, for anyone looking and wondering what those figures are. So um you know uh, eight point six grazings per, per paddock. Um you know, pre-graze Neil 465, you know, doing 41 walks every year, uh, three, 300 days of grass. Now, you, you might say you're going to miss a few days and that's, some of that's on off grazing and all that sort of thing as well, Jim. It's not 302 days, you know, just out of grass full time as such, but it's, it's extended grazing at the shoulders of the year, isn't it? Yes, and it's, you know, it, but the ambition and the goal is to have that days at grass, you know, that yeah. we have to on off grazing, if we have to house a percentage of the cows, they're housed, but there is somebody still outside. And my infrastructure on farm um, is dependent on somebody being somebody being out. We have good facilities, but we, we, have, we have good paddocks and that outside. So we want to maximize what we have outside. Yeah. And we, we need that figure at the bottom there. That's what we're... So what and we're the, the, the point to make here is, you know, this, this didn't happen overnight. And this is a very, you know, this is an average over the last five years. So, yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's very consistent. It's excellent performance. But again, it happened. It's happened over a long period. It doesn't happen overnight. So for anyone listening tonight, you know, this isn't something that as well you just achieved in a year, Jim. You know, this has been an ongoing thing with you. Yeah, it's grown up over the years. and But it, it, there's no stopping or no thinking that you, you haven't cracked this is done. There's no more. It's 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 a work in practice um, that that has to yeah. be pushed on and developed the whole time. Grant, uh, that's grand, Joe. We'll click on there because we'll look from them figures later on uh, in the reports anyway. So just Jim, we might go go through all this, but if you just I suppose like you've got excellent performance there. Um, looking at the different seasons, and I'm going to start with autumn because you suggested starting with autumn because you feel August is the the big winner or loser, I suppose, of the grass year. But just give a few um, key things throughout the year that you sort of focus on. Not, you don't have to dwell on everything there, but just um, we, a few key bits. Yeah, we'll move quick. Like, the 1st of August is the key one to me. That's when that's when I start my my plan. And I, I set myself um, a little bit more of a target this year that I wanted 1,100 for the opening cover in February. But to get that, you have to... Bring, bring it right back to August and start off in August and have everything cleared and have your 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 paddocks in the right condition to grow the heavy the, the, the heavy covers that are demanded to get your cover up the end of September. So you want everything you want everything primed, I think, in August for what's ahead. And yeah. if you follow the target. Uh, my my learning on this for the last number of years is the, the 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 covers that were set as targets are the ones that suit me on my farm. I can only talk about what suits me. Yeah. And if I don't meet them, I don't get the results in the springtime, in the mid season, and through to the next year. So yeah. it has to start somewhere. And if you want to achieve what your your targets are, you have to have a starting point and have a goal. And everything else, then you need to hit your targets as you're going along. Very good. And you're using in the shoulders, I suppose, the grass budget as well as Michal has mentioned there. So the other two is a pasture base. Yeah, that, that I find that one very good now. That that gives you a clear, that gives you a very clear picture when you're clawed back from what you want the first of February and you bring it back along. And the one great power that we have in August is we have our cows scanned. Uh, we usually have our TB test over at that stage, so we know where we are health-wise with our cows and how many are in calf. And then we have the power in our own hand with the stocking rate to to move cows on that um, are have done their business on the farm and to time that moving on to reach our targets. Yeah. Um, to me, stocking rate is a key thing for the year. You have your, your stocking rate yeah. is high. We might have a look period. at that through some of the grass, gra yeah. grass, grass anyway, yeah. Jim. So... Maybe we flick on there, Joe. Are we flick it? Are we heading over to pasture base there now? Yep, we'll come across here to pasture base. <clears throat> yeah. So just while you're doing that there, Joe, there's there's a couple of questions in here. Um, so there's a question in here from Justin Coughlin. Um, started measuring pasture base in the last year. Can see the benefits. Um, they're set it up with 22 paddocks. They're about an acre each. 
his measurement each week enough or what would the best approach to this be? And I think he's an add-on question to this. When should you start measuring grass? So, Joe, or Jim, would you give your experience there? You're doing 40 walks in the year. You're obviously doing, um, you know, you're doing most of that between, we say, 1st of March and, what, 1st of October, I suppose. Um, well, yeah, first, yeah, you would start in February. Um, oh, yeah. Like, you know, one walk, I'm just thinking roughly here, uh, one walk um, per week in February and um, into March, but I think them walks are vital. Like, you can't be just relying on, you have yeah. so much more power by doing the walk every week than relying on percentages that time of the year because you can let your, your show run on the average farm cover, which gives you more than just hitting that percentage, which is a guide as well. But there's So the walks there are very important. But then when you get to April, you know, you have, for us anyway, we go on a Monday morning to set the thing up and we go on Friday um, to set the thing up for the weekend. And um, yeah, I so think, you know, you have to get into them like, you know. So it's at least once a week and probably twice a week when you need to then as well, Jim. I and think you know so. High growth rate. Yeah. Yeah, yes, like it's the same at the start of the year, John, as the end of the year. Like one week missed in November could ruin the whole the whole year's job. One week where you didn't walk and cows went ahead and made them and you could drop cover in a flash. So, yeah, it's yeah. Perfect, Jim. Uh, yeah. So, Joe, you want to show how to get into the annual tonnage there? Yeah, good stuff. Can you see that there, lads? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. OK, so just. I suppose we wanted to focus on the couple of reports here tonight. So just first of all, for people who probably, you know, maybe aren't familiar with uh, the Pasture Base homepage here, you know, from the dashboard, look down here on the left hand side and move down here to reports. So we're really going to focus on the first four reports here tonight. So we'll, we'll start with the annual tonnage report on Jim's farm. That's fairly OK. So. I suppose to start to start with the annual tonnage report, the annual tonnage report is an excellent report highlighting the performance um, of the paddocks on your farm and also the, you know, the total grassland performance per hectare in, in a given year. OK, so as we can see, it's a nice that you know, when we, when we open it up, it's a nice visual report um, that we're hit with straight away, which displays the paddocks from left to right you know, um, the paddocks on the left, which have grown the most grass and the paddocks on the right hand side that have grown the, the least amount of grass on your farm in that given year. If we hover across each paddock on that visual display, it's going to give us more information from that paddock. So again, if we just move across there. Also, on as we move down ahead, we have, a, a, you know, a fairly large table at the end displaying all the paddocks on your farm. So, Again, we'll take example of paddock one here. Um, the pad has obviously the paddock, the paddock code and the paddock name. If over the last few years you have been, re, you know, receding, recording receding dates and maybe putting the varieties in at receding. So, you know, Abergain, Aberchoice, you know, whatever the variety may be, they will come up in that, in that, um, in that part there. We'll have to give you a smack, a smack on the wrist there, Jim. <laughs> the area, the area then next for the paddock. So after that, then the number of grazings throughout the year. So every time you enter the grazing date for paddock one, it's, they start to total up here. Every time you start, to, you enter a, a, a silage cut for that, that for paddock one pops up on this table here. And then the total, the total grazing kilos of dry matter per hectare, you know, adding up from, from what will, from those seven grazings appears here. And then the three and a half thousand of a silage cut. So, as we total to the end of the year, paddock one has grown about 16.9 tonnes, just shy of 17 tonne of grass on the farm. So again, no mean feat yeah. whatsoever. And then again, on the last three, the last three um, tabs on, 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 in the annual tonnage report is the total kilos of nitrogen per hectare and the PNK per hectare that have gone on the farm. So as we just mentioned there already, Jim is, is recording all the fertiliser and the slurry that's applied on the farm. So again, he has pretty, you know, pretty good data on the farm for each paddock for the recording. Up here at the very top, um, just quickly, what, what can happen sometimes, say for instance, a paddock is, you bring a paddock on, you take on a new, a new piece of ground on the milking platform, there's a paddock beside the shed that a few lame cows or a few calves are in throughout the year. Maybe it was only measured once or twice, it could be down here at maybe a ton or two ton of grass grown on it. 
and we might want to filter that out because it's thrown off our, um, our, our annual tonnage. If we hit the show filters button in the top of the page, and we just, for this example, we'll be putting in minimum number of covers to 30 because we know that 30 will take out paddock 12 here. So this, so this will take out that last paddock and then it's, going to, it's given us a true, exa a, true, a true reflection of the grass that was grown on the farm. So the grass that Jim had grown. So again, like Jim, no mean feet, nine, nine events of grazing events per paddock, another half of an event of a silage per paddock and about 14.6 tonnes on average grown for the year. Lastly, if you want to toggle between the years, if you click the date range and you move this back to 2019, I'm not going to do it, but I'm just going to, because we're going to stay here, move it back to the first of the first 2019 and then move this say to the, the, the end of December 2019 and hit apply filter, it'll bring you back to the previous year. Okay, so John, do you want to maybe go through some of Jim's? Yeah, just just quickly there, Jim. I suppose um, you know you, you've you've grown the grass again. You're sort of bang on what you're growing on average there this year is what you're growing. Um, how I suppose is pasture base helping you grow that grass, or does it help you grow that grass? I suppose. Well, it, it certainly it, it it helps me grow, but I suppose the most important thing pasture base does for me it makes my life easy for. For, for doing my measurement and that like it's cut down like a, we have the phone in our in our pockets and we're all experts on phones now and it's it's the app on the phone so it and I have it in a, a sequence going around so I have my my circle that I go on so it cut it cuts down my yeah. my um my time spent and it has ever live then up in front of me when I when I come back to the house just press the um, synchronize and we have it all in so it's it's yeah. definitely made life an awful lot easier and i have way more data in here yes very good and uh, how is it like say looking at the annual tonnage there have you looked at it in other years and how have you sort of how has it helped you make decisions on your farm so what or what type of decisions well, have you have you made looking at the annual tonnage like i the, the annual tonnage is is you know, if if I guess for all my walks that I've done, John. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah, go on ahead there, Jim. Sorry, yeah, I'm just ahead. I'm just toggling. Yeah, go on ahead, yeah. Yeah, no, for, for all the um, the walks that we've done, we've we've got up to a high tonnage. But I do feel if I wasn't doing those walks, I wouldn't be at that. I'd make a wrong decision somewhere, cut a paddock that we shouldn't be cutting. Um cut too many paddocks, like you know, you make a false move. So by doing the number of walks and doing the two walks during the summer allows yeah. you make the right decisions. Yeah. And um, that's what gets the yield at the end of the, end of the year. So it's all about get, like the walks are paying me well. Um, there's big money involved in this. And um, I wouldn't have that tonnage without the walks, the making the decisions, fertilizer on, and it's now all there in front of me with the app on the phone. And where, where do you see any improvements in that annual tonnage? Like it was in the grass you're growing on your farm, Jim. Do you see any improvements, or where can you improve? Because obviously, you know, it's, I, it's I do, very, very good. Yeah, I do. Th I do think that we can push it on. Like I've no great ambition to st to overstock the farm and to try and be grown twenty ton. Like I've, I've, and I haven't an ambition to grow a pile of grass in the summertime when I have enough grass. I just want enough in the summer. And I want to keep the shoulders, the shoulders right. So I want it to be sustainable and I want it to be measured and um, steady as she goes. Um, yeah. There's there's no point um, pouring on a load of fertilizer when we know we have a load of growth in May and trying to overstock, overstock and overcomplicate everything and then running out when we know the dip is going to come when that growth temp tempers off. Yeah. So I want to keep it, I want to keep it steady and grow grow a steady amount of good grass, high quality, um, and maybe we can we can do more. I know some of the lads in the group have have talked about this that we can we can be more judicious with our fertilizer in in at, at different times of the year. Yeah, and, and we, uh, we talk always, about that a bit more at the end as well. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you want to get run through here? This is a few examples or other reports of of I suppose. Uh, where farmers can improve on the annual tonnage, using the annual tonnage to improve, I suppose. 
Yeah, so thanks, John. So again, there's have improvements question mark here on this. This is a this is a different farmer now to 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 Jim. And I suppose it'd be quite typical of what we'd be coming across when we when we log into a, a, a tonnage for a farm. You know, we kind of sometimes come across and we see some of these paddocks down here at the bottom, you know, that they're might you know, we have to dip into and see exactly what's what's up with them. So we can see on this on this example paddock 20 here, there's no side, you know, it's it was it was a silage paddock, it was a two-cut silage paddock, and there was no tonnage entered for two cuts. So, you know, this does this farmer is losing yeah. a considerable amount of tonnage, you know, on that farm. Yeah. Then ne the next two paddocks there, paddock 15 and 18. They were only mentioned. They were only measured a handful of times. So again, these could be the paddocks we were talking about with with, with Jim. So I think either make make a decision whether to to leave them in, or you know, or put them in and try and measure them throughout the year. These next two paddocks, paddock eighteen and fifteen, or maybe put them out into other enterprises for the year if they're not going to kind of come in at all. But I suppose for the for 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 the next thing, it's it's really what paddocks you know. Look at the next couple of paddocks. You know, looking at this graph in the annual tonnage report, the paddock, the next three, four paddocks here, paddock 22A, 21A, 13 and 17 on this farm, like these are the ones we can focus on improving into 2021. And I suppose, look at it again, it's very much farm specific. You know, what are the reasons why these are growing under the average? You know, are they wet paddocks? You know, is there a problem? Am I only getting maybe six grazings through, you know, out of them during the year? What can I do to improve them in 2021? Can I put better roadway infrastructure in that I can graze them, you know, at the, you know, ex, you know, extended grazing at the shoulders of the year? You know, can I use something like spur roadways to get to the back of the paddock? You know, you know, a roadway up along a fence or a, or a ditch to kind of just to get, to, to get animals to the grass. You know, other examples there, look at soil fertility is another big one on these paddocks. Have you an up to date set of soil samples for these for these particular paddocks? Are they lacking in P and K? And I suppose the biggest one is the lime status. What is the lime status on these paddocks? Can we correct like, you know, can we correct it in you know this back end or, you know, or something that can be done in early in early 2021? So look at these paddocks, see, can we make a difference? Kind of look at the soil fertility report for them and make improvements. The last point on that is, you know, take a look at these paddocks in terms of the grass that's in them or, or maybe the weed, you know, the, 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 the weeds that's in them as well. You know, have we a lot of, have we a lot of um, old grasses coming into them? You know, are cows struggling to graze it out? You know, you know, when was the last time it was re receded? Does it need, you know, does it need to be freshened up a little bit? So take a look at some of these paddocks, walk into some of these paddocks and, um, you know, see, do they need uh, improvement in 2021? I suppose what, what, yeah, what cost is that to farmers then, Joe? You did a bit of a cost analysis as well. Just yeah, so analysis. once again, sorry, John. Yeah, so once again, this is a, a different farm again. He's, uh, it's about 46 hectare milking platform, growing about 13 tonnes on average throughout the year. So just for, for, for this example here this evening, we just put the red line there, as you can see in the middle, kind of from the average over to, the, I suppose, the middle, of the, the middle of the page in terms of the averages. So there's about 22 hectares of, 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 of ground that were suboptimum, so under the average for, for, the gra for, for grass growth. So, John, like, you know, you know what, are the, what are these paddocks costing, costing Irish farmers like that are measuring year in, year out on, on, on pasture base? So I kind of, there were the roughly about, it was just over a tonne and a half per hectare in these, in these paddocks that the farmers were losing out on in terms of grass growth, you know, for whatever variable, you know, number of reasons. So about 36 tonnes of dry matter they were losing out on. If we were to take a, you know, say 75% or 80% utili utilisation rate, that's about 28 tons of dry matter of utilizable grass that we're, you know, potentially losing out on on this 46 hectare milking platform. So if we were to take, um, you know, I suppose to take a value that every ton of grass down the throat of a cow, of a dairy cow is 173 euro. And we take the dry stock example of it's about 100, 105 euro. On that dairy farm, that 28 ton of grass was just shy of 5,000 euro that it was costing the farmer on a yearly basis you know, yeah. on those suboptimum paddocks. Yeah. And sure, Jim, I think you probably comment on that, that it is, you know, your extra walks, you know, it is, it, they are paying, like, you know, from going maybe from a lot of farmers doing, you know, I think the average there was 18 or 19 walks on pasture base. 
you know, you're doing 40, it, that's, that's where it's paying you, I suppose, a lot is, is in those paddocks, isn't it, as well? Like, that you're getting them up to, you yeah, know. Yeah, I think... Yeah, John, I think the extra walks are, are the, the real pain ones, um, you know, that you're keeping your cover right in the in the springtime, that you're not. We lost Jim. Can you hear, can you hear me, lads? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you, John, yeah. Yeah, we must have lost Jim for a minute. We lost Jim. Right. <clears throat> fly, fly on we're going to the, keep, keep moving. Farm cover report there, yeah. Yeah, so... So again, John here on the on the farm cover report. Um, just yeah, going go, down through it. Go uh, down G, through it here. So, yeah, Jim might come back on in a minute. Um, but if you just scroll down a little bit there, Joe. Uh, yeah, that's all right. You back with us, Jim? Yeah, yeah. back again, Jim. Yeah. We lost yeah, you there. So we're just looking yeah, at your farm me. cover report here, Jim. Um, you're doing an awful lot of walks. You've done forty-seven walks in the year. Um, you've done a, you've done a walk in every month of the year, actually, and. It, I just looking at it earlier on. I seen you, you you did as many walks in March and April and say September and October as you did during the whole you know the peak growing season when when people would sort of traditionally be saying that's when you should be walking most. But you've done as many in the shoulders as that. So just you want know, to comment on that, Jim? Yeah, like I, I had set myself. I knew in March we were we we got a little bit of it. You know, it was difficult in February. And uh, we came close to go to 550 of an average farm cover. And we got, we were in for a week and we got back out then, but I knew I had to be careful. Um, and I, I just kept doing, I got, I got my walks in and we, we, we finished our, we finished our first rotation early and we had them good enough to go back to. So that definitely paid, you know, the, all those I can see, I got big value out of. Yeah going down along through the year and the August one especially uh, August was difficult and September and uh, I, I, I know I know previous years I got caught in November by um, you know the, the, not doing enough walks because as I said earlier it can change so quickly but look it, it's a big pain event and um, I put a value on my walk that um, I have myself done on a piece of paper that I figured out what was paying. It was adding up for about 350 euros an hour to be doing them walks. And um, if that figure is right, I'm, I think it's right. Um, and I, I feel it, it, I'm getting that, but it's, it's huge money. Like, and, yes. you know, to go from maybe 20 walks to, the, to, to that 40 walks is where, you know, you're pushing yourself on to get, get to the real top of it. Yeah. So really, and I suppose you're, you're recording your data to that. So really the extra walks, recording the data and then looking at it and making the better decisions from that, that's what's paying, isn't it? That's what's paying. And like it can happen, it can happen in May. Like you, you can get this surge of growth um, and then there's a dip coming and the one that you'd planned to go into the silage pace, you might have to take it back out again, but you only know that from the second walk. And yeah. maybe we've got better at preempting, you know, dry periods that are common or, or wet periods. And maybe another thing we didn't touch on tonight was um, the dry matter of grass. Like that can change so quickly at any time of the year. Yeah. And uh, like a dry matter to go maybe from 17 or 18 percent to 12 or 13 is such a difference to your to to the amount of feed that you have and you know that, that at that at those wet times that you get in the summertime I know on our farm we have to be out walking and just the back calculation is is the great one to tell you um uh, when you go out and do that walk and you have that back calculation in your mind from the planner yeah. um you can adjust quicker the walks are giving you more control yeah, uh, to make the just, right decisions. And just Jim, just as as we we're talking about grass measuring, there's a good few questions in there about what method do you use to grass measure, and do you measure your own? Okay, farm? I do measure out farm. Yes, we do, and um, we have that in there. So that's there. Um, I could up the game on measuring out farm, but it, it's it's all mapped, and I am doing it. Um, maybe not to the amount of covers here. But um, and how I measure, I I had a weighing scales and a cutter for a long number of years, and um, I moved to a plate meter maybe 10, 15 years, ten years ago, and um, I still have that plate meter, 
Um, it's only as good as the man that's holding the plate meter. Um, it's a it's a guide, so I use the cut and weigh at other times and have eyeball as well. But I suppose the key one, I would say, whatever method I'm using, I'm checking continuously with that back calculation on the planner. Yeah. So the cow is the ultimate one that's deciding. But, um, you know, there's, there's, there's back calculations for your year's grass and for every day's grass. And I'm a big, I'm a big, you know, I'm, you, you, that's the real test for anybody. Yeah. And Jim, just on that as well, uh, maybe we're preaching uh, to the wrong people on the call here, but um, there, there seems to be, you know, a big, one of the big challenges in, in this is actually committing yourself to doing your walks in the year. Like, you know, at, you know, at the start of the year, you might have great intentions. I'm going to do 30 walks, 40 walks this year. But, you know, maybe like going to the gym at the start of the year after a while it phases out. And you you just don't I suppose uh, commit yourself and you don't have a habit. How did you overcome that? Like and you know people might be working long long hours during the week and they might be on their own and you know what what was what changes have you made to allow yourself the time to do the walking? This is where the money is. Is what this is what we have, and um, we can we can make huge progress in this and it. it it's what's feeding our animals. And um, like, I don't think we have any, you know, if we're about our business, right? If you wanted a sh- if you were a shopkeeper, um, you'd know how many bags of potatoes you had in your shop to sell. You're breaking up a little bit there, Jim. Jim must be after selling the spuds, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and just while we're just while he's, he, we, Jim might come back to us there in a second, uh, Joe. It's just uh, just very quickly there, Joe. Um, just spend uh, thirty seconds on looking at that because we need to move on. Yeah, we're under under a bit of pressure. So, I suppose you know what I think we're, we're at in terms of the averages in terms of uh, grass walks. You know, on pasture base at the minute. You know, is it really good enough to you know for the average person on pasture base the amount of covers that they're doing on a yearly basis. And I suppose, John, you know, what we've kind of come up with is that we feel that farmers should be walking, you know, a minimum of 30 to 32 times per year. Um, So really, you know, I suppose we have the target here in green in the middle of the page um, for that 30 plus times the year. year, And we have some common pitfalls that lads are, you know, lads and ladies are making um, that we have no opening and closing covers. You see on the the example over here on the left hand side, no opening or closing covers. They're not, uh, farmers are not measuring weekly, you know, during that transition period in April from, you know, low growth rates to high growth rates, you know, a week there around magic day can make a huge difference. So like, you know, we should be at least once a week in April. Um, and then as we move into the the main yeah. measuring season there, John, you know, yeah. you know, that we should be measuring twice a week, yeah. you know, to be gra- gra- grazing the right grass in front of our animals. Yeah. So this thing of like, oh, I'm measuring grass, but I'm only doing maybe, you know, 15, 20 measures. I suppose in terms of if we were to create a clear definition of what grass measuring is, it's to do to over 30 walks in the year. I suppose if you're not doing that, you're not really at the races in terms of having accurate data to look back on like this. Um, so, Jim, there's just a quick question there. You d- Can you do a quick back calculation for people? There's a lot of questions coming in. Hadn't, haven't heard a back calculation. So, no, okay. sorry to put you on the spot like, now, but... No, 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 no. I have, back calculation to me, we do our walk, right? So your walk is done, and then you have your planner on, on your app, on your phone. So that populates the planner where the next field you're going to. So I'm going to paddock paddock five in my, in my, next, in my next grazing. So paddock five... With the amount of cows I've in it, is the the planner is telling me that there's three milkins in that paddock because I've yeah. put in a cover of thirteen hundred, yeah, and there's three milkins. So okay. 1.5 days. One point five days, three milkins, yes. Yeah. And we only get two milkins, and the cows have it skinned coming out of it. Well, then that tells me that I had my cover wrong when I went in. Yeah. I had measured it at what did I say, thirteen hundred. Well, there wasn't 1,300 on it. There were something like 900 on it, okay? And it's, that's what's... And I suppose, yeah. John, you're, the more walks you do, the more back... Like, if you leave your walks 10 days of a gap between it, look at all the the, the, the miss... The, the, if, you're, if you're wrong with your covers, where you're going to be. But by 
walking more regularly and back calculating, it's making, I think it's the best tool to get your eye and whatever way you're cut and weighing and your dry matters right. Yeah. If you and equally, it. probably uh, what we see more as if, 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 it, if it's the last, we'll say 1.5 days and, and they're in it for, for two days or two and a half days, which is four or five grazings. Well, then it's, it's not your 13 or 1400, it's probably 1800. And what has happened to the next paddock in the schedule then, John, that you thought was 1500, but it really was 2000? Yeah. Where is that now when you're three days late going into it? Well, if, if I'm not measuring Jungle. twice a week, I'm, 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 I've lost the game in, in that scenario. And it's, you know, it's going to be but a bit messy to get back on track. Seri- it's a very serious point, like the, the back calculation and the planner. Like, yeah. it, you know, the lads are great to help with. Uh, Michal got me going on that planner two years ago there now. And it's, 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 oh, it's a great tool. And it's great for, for other people that are in with you. Like you do the walk. And they can they can have it on their phone then, and you can print it out maybe and have it left in the milk compiler there, and um, it's easy for people to understand it. You know, you've you've one point five milkins three, you've one point five days three milkins in that paddock away you go. Yeah, yeah. and okay. I suppose just I suppose to comment as well that the the pasture base app is available on the, the Play Store and and the, the Google Store as well. Uh, you'll find it under PBI Grass. Um, and just Jim, you, you were you were saying to us that you were considering a career change and you're know, becoming a shopkeeper or something. And you were talking about spuds. You might finish that one for us. Yeah, no. I'm, okay, I'll try and hope this internet stays better. But like the point I make is about the shopkeeper. My local shopkeeper in my local village will know how many potatoes he has, what bags of potatoes he has, because he has to sell them and make a margin on them. Surely we have to know at any time how much grass we have out there. And it's always changing for us because it's like the shop, someone is coming in and biting it and the cows are eating it and we have to keep our stock, our stocks right. You couldn't run a shop without knowing what stock you have. And to me, how could we be grass farmers without knowing yeah. continuously what we have on our farm? So super your, point, super point, Jim. Yeah. You, you, you've changed and sort of like you, you said it at the start there, Jim, you know, everything is contracted out, which leaves you the time to go and yeah. do the yeah. do the grass walk that, that's going to pay you 350 euro an hour you're going to delegate out the job that maybe w- would cost you 20 euro an hour whatever it is you're going to concentrate yeah, on, the, on the big money you're following the money as you said i'm following the money and i'm trying to make life as easy as possible for myself and look at where there, there's a, um, a contractor that i have a good relationship with over a long period and uh, I know what it's like to be a contractor. I help, I worked at that myself one time with the same crowd. And um, it's not easy, but they love doing it. And they have the big, like a contractor can come in to me to spread fertilizer at a rate and bring a machine of over 100,000 euros between, between the tractor and the f- fertilizer spread it, spreader. And we can spread precisely with that machine to cost me a fortune to yeah. replace it. And... Um, I can, I, can, I can have the, the work done for them and the paddocks are all numbered and we have a map for them to go around on. So it's very efficient. And it's this, yeah. I'm just making the fertilizer example with everything else. Yeah. Anyway, I think... Kind of last to me in there. We've point there anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll so keep moving. Just moving on. The, uh, yeah, looking at the farm summary report. Right, so this is the... This is uh, another new report for this year, and it's a great one-pager. It's great for discussion groups because it gives a, a lot of the information that's in the other reports. It's all on one page um, as, a, as an overview. So, you know, I'm not going to go down through through all the figures. Um, I was going to – I think Jim, Jim may be back now, but we might go through too much of it. But just to say that the annual tonnage are there, your pre-grazing yield are there, your, um, your average growth rate over the summer is, is there. So, you know, important for looking at stocking rates for, for summertime. Um, your farm covers are there. Your 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 um, opening and closing covers are there. Um, your meal fed, milk, and following on through the fertilizer and stuff uh, like that. So everything is very comprehensive. It's very good for discussion groups. So if you're in discussion groups, maybe, you know, asking your advisor to, you know, print it off and maybe have a look, you know, compare, pair each other if you're if you're doing a lot of measuring. So that would be, that would be handy. So just, Jim... Um, one thing I noticed when I was looking back at your sort of five-year averages, you're on about opening the farm cover at around 1,100. Now, I think this year, where did you open at? 
well that's I think it was 8.36 in early January I think it was up around 900 or thereabouts um, uh, in early February so you you aren't just where you'd like to be um, have you any comment to make on that? You're on mute there Jim You're on mute, mute Jim <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you now, Jim. Yeah, um, we, we that's for this year. We're not where we want to be this year, is it, or last year? La well, we say the spring gone by, yeah. The spring gone by, yeah. We were we got pinched in November last year. I I overdid it. Um, I over yeah, we overgrazed in late November last year, and we we got pinched a bit. And I was determined this year that that wouldn't happen to me and that I keep on my targets the whole time. So I think we've, we've, we've rectified that coming in. I think we're in a good yeah. position this year. You're closing um, up a bit higher than we, normal this year. We did and you pay made, a bit of a yeah. price for that. In this, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So even, even so though we'll with all your, that, we'll see how, even though with all your experience you say, and, and measuring or measuring for so long, you're still finding ways to improve it and make adjustments as you go along. I think so. Yes, I think so. And um, definitely we've, we've, we've hammered it on the, the extra walks. I think they, they, that's the crucial one. But also in the, in, the spring, in the springtime and the summertime, I have, um, you know, I just don't, I, I beat, that, beat that. We know it's going to head out the middle of May. So yeah. we have to be on our game and keep it under. To me, I'm saying 1,300 is my, you know, two good fists of grass is 1,000. Um, three fists of grass is fifteen hundred, so we want two and a half. We want two and a half fists of grass for, and we don't want to go above that because it's it's yeah. such difficulty when it does. You're cutting and everything, and I have no great ambition to make a whole pile of bags of silage. We make high quality pit silage. We'll take bags if we have to, but I just I'm trying my best not to get caught with paddocks going going heavy on me. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so just looking at the Joe's moved on there to the to the grass report. Now this is there's a lot of information within within these and that table there on the Excel format. Um, I I prefer to look at the graphs. I don't sort of look at the table too much. So Joe's clicking on the graphs at the top. So um, the first set of graphs that we'll see here now um, include a lot of the sort of the the indicators that you'd have under your weekly grass wedge. So it's good to have your it's going to track the um, average farm cover, the cover per, is it there? You might just have to refresh it or something, Joe. Um, yeah, so it's going to have your average farm cover, your cover per livestock unit, um, your stocking rates, your demand, your growth, what you're supplementing, um, all those things in underneath it. And it gives it for the year so you can track yourself for the year so everyone should know their targets for the farm so you know it's important that um unless you might have to log log back in or something joe oh maybe yeah uh, maybe oh yeah. Right. no it's coming it's there, it's there yeah no you're, you're there now yeah sorry so yeah, yeah there's the farm cover uh, we just keep scrolling down there, Joe. We'll have the farm cover, your cover per livestock unit, your stocking rate, uh, your growth, the group growth, and your demand per hectare <clears throat> throughout the year, your feed supplement. So they are tracking. There's two lines there. So there's 2019 and 20. <clears throat> That's what's being tracked. So you're comparing uh, the two years. Now you can compare the different years if you want. Uh, you can compare for different groups or different mobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Again, these are the filters that you can mess around with to look at it in different ways and benchmark against different different approaches. Um, if there's the, the growth curve. And Michal, you wanted to make a comment on that that some people were looking to know for budgets and things. Yeah, so I suppose there's a common question we'd get in would be um, guys looking for growth rates, especially in the spring and autumn. Um, so I suppose go into the, the reports, hit grass report, um, and it's the middle report here, the, the growth curve. And if you scroll down there, I suppose you get the last three years, you get the average and um, you, you actually get a curve down with the bottom as well. Um, so you can see the different years and the variation between the years. So I think there, there's two more graphs there, Joe, if, if you want to take it or, or John. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the, so yeah the, 
the, yeah, the next graph then is is um, I suppose it's probably seen how efficient you are with with, with your input or with your, with your meal really, um, because it's looking at the growth which is in the red the red line there, uh, the green bar chart is your demand and that's your demand from grass only, <clears throat> and then your, the blue line is, is is what you're supplementing in to to make up your I suppose to to make up um, uh, well on top of the on top of the grass demand, so. What you're really looking for here is that, especially during the summertime, that you're matching, you know, you're matching stocking rate and matching what you're feeding to what is, what is actually growing on the farm. And that's what Jim has alluded to that. And that's why he's walking so much is to do that and keep keep on track track of the pre-grazing yield. Um, if if you see big areas there where the red line is way over the, the grass line and there's a lot of blue there, that's an indication that you're putting in a lot of meal and really all you're doing is you're putting in meal to make surplus beds of silage. So you're sort of, you're not being that efficient with, with feed on the farm in that scenario. You know, and from an input point of view, you'd be much better off trying to reduce back on, on supplement, graze more grass um, and match the growth with the, or sorry, the demand with the growth. And this is just another way of looking at it. So this is your cover per cow um, with, the sup, with the supplement and the milk solids is in red. So if the, the scroller was small, but their jaw, you just might be able to see it. See it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So the um, the sort of green line is the supplement. The red line is the milk solids, and the black line is the cover per livestock unit. So obviously, again, like like the last graph, you don't want to be feeding an awful lot of supplement into the into the cow's diet when you know, or or any animal's diet when the cover per livestock unit is um is high. You know, you know, you're trying to utilize as much grass as possible that's making the most money so you know that's what we need to do so jim just a comment there jim on your average farm cover there joe you can work away with 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 um your examples but you built your farm cover there up to nearly 1200 there at the end of september why do you go with that target and so how do you get there well as we said earlier when we when we when we want to get to eleven hundred of an opening cover, we to get that it look I can only get there if I have it high enough the end of September. I have to get I have to get high enough the end of September to, to have the grass for October. And um, look I know it's hard grazing those heavy covers, but with the strip wire and the and the right calculations, um it can be done. But it does involve like anyone thinks that you're going to let cows into um, twenty eight hundred of a cover in September and they get three or four milkings out of it like that won't work. The strip wire has to be the strip wire has to be used, and I've no problem with that in at any time of the year. And I suppose that's something maybe we didn't didn't talk about much tonight, but it is a big part of it. It's a big part of getting the cover of, of managing them high covers. Yeah. And so, how like a lot of people have have an idea, I suppose, in their head of where they want to be, but then fall off the wagon, I suppose, a bit. You know, maybe in early August they say, right, I need to get it to a thousand or eleven hundred or twelve hundred, whatever it is. And you know, come come the time when they should be there, they're not there, Jim. And where do you think, I suppose, from your experience, because you, you probably experienced yourself, where where uh, do you fall down? Where do people? You fall know, down? the way I look at it, John, is we know that we impede on growth if our average farm cover goes under 500 we know that don't we in the in the at some times in the in the, yeah, in the so early just, year just we don't want that the, oh. we were just saying i suppose that if your farm cover is less than 500 you have an awful lot of the grass sward with only say one leaf on it so and as grass grows grass if there's only one leaf on it well then it can't grow to you know more grass so and jim you're building on that point then to say I'm building on that point because how can you grow the grass to get the cover higher? It, like you, if you don't get these high covers, you're, you're impinging your farm's ability to feed itself through the shoulders of the year and to meet them targets. It's the, it's the same thing. Like you can't, you can't have it everywhere. You can't have, you can't get to the figures with, with all low covers everywhere. Well, I can't manage it anyway. It's, yeah. you, you have part of this and, and, and having the long grazing year of hopefully 300 days is by having heavy covers at times and then managing them and grazing them down as, you know, with, with the strip wire. 
that yeah, yeah. it can't that, work to me to me it doesn't work where you follow the the guidelines on the targets throughout yeah. the year it's not just a target at a time that suits us when it's all low covers like yeah it's it's and a full package and i suppose it's important to say that you're you're on a fairly dry farm in other parts of the country heavier farms it might be the 300 days but maybe it's 260 days that the target is but yeah. whatever it is it's, it's to suit you know it's a good ambition for for your own farm you know and i, and I think you've mentioned that that all, all the figures and things you talk about there they suit your farm They're, you're not going to buy them for any other reason that they work for you i suppose they, they do, and I, I know our internet has been poor maybe tonight, but the one other thing I'd, I'd emphasize highly is your stock rate at the start of the year, but your stock rate for the year is a, is a movable feast in your own hands. Um, you can control it to get these targets and get these, the, yes. these, the, these results that we need. So you will actually you know, alter that by maybe even housing a few cows or selling off a, a, some cows that you know, maybe, I don't know, whatever, warranty calf or something in August time, if it's, if it's a case that you have to drop from maybe <coughs> something like 3.2 back to 2.8 uh, or something like that. Uh, absolutely. Because it, again, if, if I don't, and then I'm caught and it goes on, I'm, I'm eating, I'm eating my feed that I had and I have to replace it with bought in and I'm into a merry go round a circle and it suits everybody else, but it doesn't suit me. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, Jim. Sorry, Joe. There's perfect stuff. We'll keep we we we'll keep going anyway. So we just have a couple of examples on some of the graphs from the grass report there. So it could be applicable to 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 some of your farms. Um, so this example here, we've a, we've a farmer here. So his farm cover in 2019 versus 2020. So an example of he has too much cover in springtime and too little in the autumn. So in this example, as we, uh, you know, I suppose, as we know, the, the February was quite wet. He didn't really get going too early. Um, but the problem was his cover per cow and his, you know, was, was running at nearly two over 200 per cow up until the 1st of June. So, you know, rather than whipping out a couple of bales, say, in maybe April time and get starting the second round a bit quicker, you know, this, this this farmer kind of probably tried to graze his way out of it and probably got into a bit of a got into a bit of a spin. So have confidence in 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 the past in pasture base when you when you walk your farm. Take action. Bail out a couple of paddocks if you need to. Then on the flip side of that, in August, this farmer this year, as you can see, Jim was you know talking about the importance of walking his farm in August. If you see on the bottom right, this farmer he walked it. He walked the farm twice in August, once on the 12th, and probably the other one was as good and was as good as the first of September. So if we look at his, his cover there in the, in, on, the, on the black line in the middle of the page, when it came towards the middle of September, he was, you know, on his way down to 600 of a cover. So, you know, by, he, by the time he got to the first of September there and me measured on the 27th or measured on the 27th of August, you know, the game was up. There's no way he's going to, he, he's going to build the grass from that on. So, you know, yeah. walking every week, <clears throat> walking every few days in August is, is, is extremely important. And, you know, a couple of farmers we've been, we've been chatting to throughout the year, you know, asking them, what is, what is the key thing that they really focus on? And like, the key thing that they're coming back and telling us all the time is keep the you know keep on target in terms of the rotation length. So from the first of August, by you extending your rotation length, you're naturally going to start building this grass. Okay, so from bringing it up to the first of September at your given stocking rate, moving it out to thirty days, out to thirty five days, you know that is probably the key thing there in terms of in yeah. terms of building grass. And I came across a bit of that as well this year, where farmers that were on maybe maybe 22, 23 days, and they should have been on 30 days. And, you know, if they, if they wanted to do it right, they had to very quickly, instead of maybe grazing a paddock every two days, it was a paddock sort of every three days, that sort of thing. Yeah. But, and the rest had to be, you know, it had to be slowed down some way. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Perfect. We keep going again, John. Um, I suppose this, this example here, the more the farmer walks the, walk the farm, the, you know, I suppose the more often he was going into the, uh, the correct pre and yield. So if the example there in blue, 2019, his cover per livestock unit was running at about 260 kilos per cow for the year. 
Okay, he walked the farm 13 times in that, I suppose, that spell from mid-April to mid-August. So as you can see, his pre-grazing yield was 1855 throughout the summer. OK, so again, too high when we when we, we come back, come back to some of our targets. Then in 2020, he walked the farm 27 times in that in that same spell. He had a cover per livestock unit of about 182 and his pre-grazing yield was 1590. OK, so he's coming back much, you know, much closer to the ideal in terms of his pre-grazing yield. And we know the target is probably somewhere to by between 160 and 180 kilos of dry matter over the summer. And again, farmers are constantly telling us, you know, as I've been, you know, using pasture base more often, I'm walking my farm more often during the summer, the more often that my animals are going into the correct grass. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving along fairly live, you, you came across this already, John. It was an example in terms of the growth versus demand. In this example, a farmer here, he fed, he kept feeding three kilos after the drought was over there in the summer. So he had high growth rates, but his demand was obviously still lower due to due to feeding 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 the extra meal. If he had reduced the meal in the in that meantime, in this example, he was okay for silage. Now he didn't need the silage. If his meal was had been reduced to one kilo from three, he would have he pushed his demand up to about sixty eight um, kilos per day in the in this in this example. So over that thirty days where he didn't keep the meal, you know, it, he didn't reduce the meal. He ended up making an extra 40 bales and buying an extra eight ton of meal into the, uh, uh, buying an extra eight ton of meal. So this was, so essentially in that scenario, when he didn't need the silage, he was buying meal to make silage and his cost fell on in concentrates at roughly 270 a ton. It was probably coming into somewhere around two and a half, two, 2,200. So you made the, the, you, you made the point already, John, in terms of you know matching your demand over the summer into the, what your farm is growing, yeah, yeah. And lastly, in terms of the um, you know we just have a couple of examples here on a from a dry stock point of view. Well, for beef, sheep, and dry yeah. stock, um, you know a lot of them will kind of maybe focus on pre grazing yield and days ahead throughout the summer. Again, this in 2019, this this dry stock farmer. He was running, it was his first year measuring, measuring grass. He was running probably somewhere around 23 days ahead on grass for the summer. Yeah. So he was probably going into too heavy a cover, 10 to 11 centimetres, 1,600 covers. And his demand was somewhere around 35 kilos per hectare um, for, for, for that summer. Then in 2000, 2020, you know, he, he moved up. So he moved up, he walked the farm more often. He brought his days ahead in grass which, you know, the dry stock side of house preferred to use um, back to 18 and its pre-grazing yield was back to 1500. So again, it's coming back to the old adage, you keep walking your farm, you're going to, you know, you're going to make improvements. So he is coming back to the nine, 10 centimeters that we're consistently talking about. And he, and he upped the stock and rate a little bit in the, in between. So yeah. just, I suppose, a couple of key points here, John, that, you know, demand can be quite variable. What we're seeing across some of the beef farms, the sheep and dry stock farms, they're, normally a bit lower, lowly, you know, lower stocked than the dairy farms. So if you're stocked at 50 to 60, you know, if you have a demand of 50 to 60 kilos across your farm, you're probably one of the higher stocked people in the, on the dry stock side. You can afford to maybe run down to maybe 12 days ahead mid season and still be grazing the 14, 15 hundreds. But, you know, if you're, if you're more lower stocked then, you know, at, at, and maybe a demand of somewhere around 30 to 40, you're probably still able to stay grazing the, you know, the, the ideal type of covers um, at probably in around 16 days ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's bang on. Uh, yes, yeah, because they are very variable. Uh, just what, there was one question in there, Chris, because uh, uh, from Michael McGuigan there, how do beef farms extend the grazing rotation in the autumn time? Um, and I suppose that's probably coming back to the, um, probably silage ground is coming back in at the uh, late summer. And that's probably going to do it naturally on a lot of farms. But um, there probably is other options that if you're very highly stocked on a beef farm and maybe, you know, as cattle are growing throughout the year, they're eating more and it's coming to that time of year. You know, you know, it comes back to the same thing. If you want to have the longer grazing season and um, want to have the cattle out grazing for longer, it's, it's maybe a case if it's finishing cattle, maybe some of them have to come off the platform to drop stocking rate uh, if that is an issue. But again, keep an eye on rotation length and um, 
probably even putting out, you know, your your um, some some dry stock farms might even this year had a lot of grass on the farm in August time, maybe skipped on the round of fertilizer and then found it very hard, I suppose, to keep that, you know, grass ran out very quickly, maybe into September, October. So even just keeping out the fertilizer as well should help a lot. So Okay. Just one point I'd like to make, John, there. Um, the fertilizer you? used, all the fertilizer is, um, it, is, is in there, plus all the slurry that spread um, with, the, with the, um, the trail and shoe system. But the 270, someone saw there, I saw a question for it, is both added together. And I think the figure for the chemical nitrogen is somewhere around 225. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, good there, point to make there on that, Jimmy. There's there's far forty yeah, forty plus coming from from sorry, and there was just another question in in, in Jim as well. Do you bulk sub spread or who does it for you? Oh, um, bulk uh, contract spread like um, no, I you I don't buy bulk bulk fertilizer as such. Uh, it's it's we buy uh, you know an RT load and have it in the yard uh, of the different types. So is that the question? Like, is it bulk as in loose? Is that the question? You no, I'd say it's a contractor, is it so? It's oh, contractor. contractor, oh, yes, contractor into spread all fertilizer, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, lads, we'll, we'll 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 keep going. We're on the, on the home straight. So, John, you might just maybe have a quick chat about our, the webinar that we're having in early January or mid January. Yeah, sorry. So, so, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so we're having a, I suppose, we wanted to focus tonight just, I suppose, on the grazing aspect and what we could do on the farm in terms of managing. You know, um, your average farm cover cover for livestock unit and those different targets throughout the year to you know to get a, you know a long grazing season and have good quality grass for grazing. You know, to that was the lower inputs costs and also to maximise or optimise the the output that were that were given. So, but we suppose we thought it was you know given the the, the circumstances and the challenges maybe that 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 we're facing um we probably need to improve our nutrient use efficiency so i suppose this led to uh, i suppose uh, an add-on uh, webinar uh, on top of this one focusing just on nutrient use efficiency using pasture base so um that's going to take place on the 13th of january um so that's after christmas uh, and again it'll be 7 p.m like this scenario here in the even time and we're going to focus on i suppose you know how to record the fertilizer um uh, record it accurately and then I suppose, you know, finding a base of where we actually are. Because a lot of farmers, what we might know from maybe dockets and things like that and what we've bought onto the farm, we don't have accurate data for what each paddock. Yeah, we've lost. Yeah, we've lost John. Lost yeah. John ahead anyways. Yeah, so look at, you know, I suppose he, he covered some of the key points on that anyway. So, you know, with the... The environment where the the climate we're in now in terms of you know reducing the nutrient that's going out on the farm look tune in on that night and we'll um you know we'll be we'll be going through some it, it'll be advertised again through social media just like tonight yep okay so the last couple of slides here now so um uh, the i suppose the grass 10 team again will be taking on um i suppose we're advertising for grazing courses for 2021 um, you know, the last couple of years, the the grass ten grazing courses have been a have been a great success. Um, a lot of farmers have made huge improvements over the last number of years. If you've been, you know, if I suppose if you've been looking at the uh, the grass ten weekly newsletter, we do have testimonials in, and there's been a couple of videos produced in the last number of weeks. So, you know, if you have any interest, you know, why why should you join a grass ten grazing course in your area next year? If you want to develop your knowledge of grazing management, grow and utilize more grass. You know, if you want to learn to measure grass and use Pasture Base Ireland to make better decisions on your farm, if you want to, you know, if you want, you know, to be in a discussion group format and, you know, I suppose to be encouraging support from advisors and fellow farmers who are, you know, very much like minded to yourself, you know, get in contact with us. And again, to help you meet your derogation requirements in terms of grass measurements, you know, you know, make a make make a start at at that as we move into 2021. So again, we're yeah, again we've advertised at the minute on the, again on the on the pasture based weekly grass uh, the, the the sorry the grass ten weekly newsletter, and again on the grass ten page on the on the Chagas public website, you can you can fill in the form there, and we will get back to you in due course. Just a question to Jim there on that, uh, Jim. Like you've been measuring grass for a long time, but still you felt you wanted to join a, a grass course. 
like had you I, I would have thought that you know someone who's been experienced like you would, would they need to do a grass course I, I think you do John Yes, um, maybe maybe others can do without, but I I can only speak for myself. Yeah, y- you might. Um, it's a practice and it's a discipline, and I think by being in the group like a grass ten group, you meet you you're lined up with other people who are measuring, and you you know their figures are in there, and you can compare with them, and you're you're with the people that are really committed to it, and you're it's like rubbing shoulders with the with the right people. And um, it's, I think I need the discipline anyway. I know the, uh, of a group that's specific for grass and grass only, that that's, I think is very important. And I think there's so much more. It makes your, your life and your gathering of data that you have to do for other things with the way pasture base has it set up. Now you're getting so much more done. Um, it's, it's so time efficient. Um, so I like to have an, Getting in with the like of yourselves there in pasture base has been has has helped me a lot with it. Yes, so I do think yes, every farmer needs to be in some kind of a group and aligned to people out there, you know, that they they can uh, compare with. And so, you know, if if, if you were looking at uh, if I if I was looking at this as a as a farmer tonight, Jim, and I'm saying, geez, I really need to be doing more walks next year. Would joining a grass ten course help me? I suppose. I think. I think it would, yes. And like, do, have we all got the full benefit out of the, the um, pasture base and the reports? Like, there, there's still more reports that I haven't in. I haven't all the reseeds. I haven't wrote down in a book here, but I haven't them in here all the different varieties. So there's there's more to be done the whole time. And um, I think we've no. It's it's our business, and it's where the money is. And um, it, there's nobody going to come in and sell this in a finance package to you and you feel, making you feel all great about it. It's something we have to take on ourselves, but the benefits are for ourselves. Very good. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. And just to add on to that, then, I suppose, from a Pasture Base Ireland uh, point of view, I suppose, we have gone through an awful lot this evening. And um, I suppose thanks for everyone for, for holding on for, for the whole length of uh, the webinar. Um, we have huge numbers tonight. Um, um, which is which is really shows to us, I suppose, that um, that that grassland is taken seriously, and um, there's a as well there there's a huge amount of questions, and I suppose we we'll be busy the first half of tomorrow anyway, coming back with answers uh, to them. I think um, you'll get your own you'll get your own chat show, Jim. I think <laughs> there's a lot of questions in here for you. I, I'm after getting a, a, a text message from um, um, someone in Wexford telling me that I need a better internet connection. <laughs> so <I don't> <laughs> All the money you're making from grass measurement. And, uh... <laughs> um, I'm, I'm cutting costs maybe where I shouldn't. Be, but someone might sponsor for me for every day, but just maybe it went maybe it went wrong a little tonight there. But I hope everyone got something out of it. No, no, you're no. Not. So I suppose one, one one thing out of I suppose 2020 and COVID I suppose has been. Um, um, I suppose the use of the likes of uh, Zoom and um, and Webex and, and whatever else. So I suppose it makes um, I suppose training that bit easier. Um, so I suppose we're we're kind of I suppose putting out the invitation to all um, advisors and all uh, farmers discussion groups um, as well um, that if they would like to to spend maybe an hour um, using pasture base, whether it's um, whether it's a basic getting set up on pasture base and um, recording covers. Or maybe it's just to go through reports um, with, with guys which have already covers put in. Um, we we'll definitely will we'll accommodate that. And um, it, it says January there, but to be honest, we can do it any time in 2021. Um, and the email address is there. If you, if you have any, if you show any interest or, or have any queries, um, we're more than happy to help um, help you through, I suppose, 2021 and to make sure that, that, that you hit your, your grassland targets. Perfect stuff. So thanks, Michal, for that. So just to summarize on some of the stuff, again, look at we've covered a, a, an awful lot of an awful lot of detail detail there tonight in a lot of the reports. But to maybe take away some 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 key points and to summarize it a bit, you know, we're coming back to it again every time. If you walk and measure your farm, you know, 30 plus times the year, you're going to make better grazing decisions throughout the year. So use pasture base. Try and aim in 2021 to walk to walk your farm 30 plus times. The more data that you have, you know, with the good fleet of reports that's there, you can make improvements there on, you know, over the coming years. If you really want to, I suppose, up your game, 
join a grass 10 grazing group for practical on farm help um you know in in 2021 from other like-minded farmers yourself get in contact get in contact and fill in the form on the on the grass 10 website you know have a quick our, our weekly newsletter is is um is put out every tuesday um, throughout you know every Tuesday throughout the year so there's a lot of tips updates technical updates every week on it um, so even if it's just to have a quick have a quick look through it for some targets on it you know have a have a have a look at that on a weekly basis and I suppose just 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 lastly you know look through your own reports from 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 Pasture Base Ireland be it you know get your discussion group together and look and look through them you know, or, you know, work with your advisor one-on-one or print them off yourself and just circle a few things. And even if for 2021, you pick two or three things on your farm, maybe you want to get your pre-grazing yield, you know, pre-grazing yield back to maybe 1,400. Maybe you want to sort out one or two paddocks that are on the, the poorer end of your annual tonnage report. You know, there's, there's, there's a number of things there where farmers can improve. So pick a few of them and try make that improvement in 2021. Yeah. And and I suppose they will have, that will help you to achieve grazing and I'd, I'd even I'd even go as far as to say there, Joe, like people should be, you know, as soon as they leave this webinar this evening, go and write it in on your phone, write it in that you're going to sit down for an hour or something, even look at them, not say, yeah, that's that's something I'm going to do now next week or the week after, you know, it's going to be Christmas then. You know, go and look at it now soon when it's fresh in your mind. Set aside an hour or two, look through your reports. And as Joe, Joe says, you know, you know where you should be, uh, you know where you are. And, you know, set a few goals for yourself for next year and, you know, do the walks and, and uh, achieve them. Brilliant there, John. So I suppose, look, at lastly, before we finish up, um, I would like to thank the sponsors of and the stakeholders of, of Grass 10. So we have Chagas, the department, the Farmer's Journal, AIB, Grass and Agro and FBD. I would like to, you know, to, to thank Jim for, you know, over the last 10 days. He's given us a huge amount of time. He was on the phone John was pestering him for an hour last night, trying to get the last few bit, <laughs> the last few bits out of him. So um, thanks a million, Jim. We really appreciate it. You know, thanks, it's great Jim. to have you know you've super data there on pasture base over the last number of years. So thanks, thanks very much. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the people who tuned in tonight. Um, you know, a great numbers on 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 the call. So I'd like to wish you uh, a happy Christmas and continued success into into twenty twenty one with your your grassland management. So. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Thanks, Michal. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. See you, Joe. Thanks. Bye-bye. See you in